Okay, well, let's switch, switch gears a little. Let's go to Elux Adeline. Bill, you have some experience with the product, but also perhaps in the clinical trial work. What's your thought on Elux Adeline? Tell us about the product first, and then and then the post product experience yeah, so and some of the side effects. So well. it's a drug that um, that affects uh, different types of opioid receptors. So like loperamide. Um, it is a, it's a, a mu opioid agonist, but it also has effects on delta and kappa receptors as well. So this mixed agonist antagonist activity is thought to um, decrease the likelihood of developing tolerance and also enhance the effects on pain. Um, the, there, were, there was evidence in the phase three trials, which, which actually Tony published, um, on the overall symptoms, so pain and, and diarrhea and patients with IBSD. And it, as you allude to, it's FDA approved, and there are two doses, 75 um, and 100 uh, milligrams uh, taken twice a day. Uh, and overall, I think it's a very effective drug, particularly for diarrhea. I think it can be very, very effective. The um, one issue that people need to know about, um, just as we talked about safety issues around alosetron, is with eluxadiline, um, there's a risk of developing abdominal pain in elevated liver enzymes or pancreatic enzymes thought to represent either sphincter of OD dysfunction or acute pancreatitis. Um, I, it's interesting, I saw a poster here at this meeting talking about the post-marketing experience, um, uh, which is actually describing a sharp reduction in the report of cases of um, of sphincter of OD dysfunction and acute pancreatitis, which is encouraging. I think you know, we're all... But isn't that because of the warnings uh, that were posted by the FDA. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but to me, that, and that's great. Yeah, that's because, great. That's what the yeah, FDA that's, is for. That's, you know, exactly what, that, that's exactly what, what we had hoped for, right? So, and just to amplify that point, the people listening to the program should just understand that you should not be using this drug in people that have had a cholecystectomy because those are the people that are more likely to go on and develop sphincter of OD dysfunction in the, in, with this drug. And you should not be giving to this drug to people who are consuming more than three alcoholic beverages per day because that seems to amplify the risk for developing acute pancreatitis. But, but you're absolutely right about the comment about that data, but that's very encouraging that, that the rates are going down with people being more uh, circumspect to following the instructions laid out by FDA. Yeah, it's important to follow the safety guidelines on products. Um, experience with eluxadiline? Uh Sure. I think uh, what Bill said was, is correct, and I think the data um, showed that in the clinical trials, which it, it seems to have more effect on bowel function, uh, less so with abdominal pain. I'll just one caveat uh, that, that uh, when you look at the cutoffs for abdominal pain that were used in that trial, like an improvement of more than 30 percent, which is thought to be clinically significant, that it was not statistically significant um, in the trial. But when you used a higher cutoff, like 40 and 50 percent, you did see more separation. Um, and the placebo response rate was quite high. So in the uh, phase three trials, there was about 50 plus percent of patients that had uh, an improvement of 30 percent or more, but the placebo rate was you know, right, you know, right on its tail, which is pretty high for a clinical trial. Uh, but I think it, it does mirror my clinical practice as more of a bowel function. Hey, Mark, can I just make one more comment on that yeah, too, sure. which is that um, there, uh, Tony was involved in this project as well, uh, but uh, it's also important, I think, to mention that for patients who have not responded to loperamide, eluxadiline can still work. Um, because let's, the reality is we're never going to use this drug as a first-line agent. The, you know, you're pretty much always going to, you're only going to use this in people who have failed other things like, like loperamide in particular. And it turns out that um, there still appears to be efficacy in people who, who have not gotten better with loperamide by using eluxadiline. So I just wanted to mention that for the folks listening.